Our next story shows how creative people can be about ways to help wounded veterans rehabilitate. Project Healing Waters is a program that teaches fly fishing as therapy to the war wounded patients at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. The program, started in 2005, is the brainchild of retired Navy Captain Ed Nicholson. Captain Nicholson saw the need for a program using fly fishing to help the wounded military personnel regain the use of their damaged arms and legs and relieve the emotional stress caused by their wounds. Let's take a look at how the program works. Avin Forsyth is having a good day on the pond at the Armed Forces Retirement Home in Washington, D.C. The bluegills just can't seem to stay away from his fishing line. But this isn't just a fish story. The fact that Avon is fishing at all today is a credit to this man, 77-year-old John Colburn. Colburn has been a resident at the Armed Forces Retirement Home since 2000. He teaches a fly tying class at Walter Reed Army Medical Hospital in Washington, D.C. It's for soldiers and Marines seriously injured during combat duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. I had four guys with artificial left arms and one guy that had a, an artificial, not an artificial right arm, but his right arm had been very badly wounded and he had only a very little use of his right hand. That guy was Avent, a first lieutenant in the Army who was severely injured in January 2005 by an improvised explosive device, or IED. I was in Mosul, Iraq. Um, I was in convoy, and I got blasted by an IED, um, and it did a lot of damage to the arm. It, um, I lost soft tissue and bone, and I lost two nerves, and that's why I have uh, my hand is paralyzed, and I have very limited function in my elbow. Sergeant Russ Martin is also a student in Colburn's fly tying class. He was seriously injured in a bus accident in Kuwait after his unit had been deployed to the Iraqi border. Uh, I lost mobility on my hand a lot, so the fly tying and everything helped out a lot for like the fine motor skills and the casting the same way because you got to always constantly use this hand. You can't not use your left hand. You always got to keep moving. So it's kind of cool, you know. John Colburn is using his lifelong love of fly fishing and fly tying to help these wounded veterans learn to use their arms and bodies again after sustaining such serious injuries. It wasn't so much to teach them to tie flies and to become very proficient fly tires. It was getting get them to use their hands to do things, and it works. Uh, and it's the hardest job I ever had and the most rewarding job I've ever had. The big difference between fly fishing and other kinds of fishing is that that fly is very light, it's small usually, uh, very air resistant, and if you try to throw it, it if it goes 10 feet, that's, that's really a long throw. And then there are the materials used to make fly ties the hooks used to entice fish. It's a delicate procedure, tying all that material onto a hook. You take the, the hook and you start wrapping on feather and fur, uh, various materials to make a, some, something that you hope a fish is going to think it's good to eat. And uh, all, all flies are hand tied. They, they've never come up with a machine that will do it. What do you suggest? Colburn has learned how to adapt fly tying to each student's particular handicap. You never said to somebody, well, let me do it for you. What it was was, well, let me show you how to do it, and then you try it. I'll go ahead and show them how to do it, and then I'll unwind what I did and say, now here, you do it. Colburn has grown close to his students and considers many of them, including Avon, to be friends. Colburn lived part of his life in Billings, Montana, where Avon is from. That connection makes the two even closer. He knows people that I know <laughs> when I lived there in Billings. Uh, and of course, we've got a commonality there because we've fished the same rivers and stuff. 
We haven't fished the same water because you never fish the same water twice. <laughs> he feels for the newly injured who join his class. When you walk in there and you see somebody that is just barely out of high school with one or two legs missing or a leg and an arm missing or something like that, it, it, it's heartbreaking. I've heard, heard them say uh, that, you know, they, they wanted to die, that, uh, you know, there's no more, nothing more to live for. And they're very depressed, very, very down on themselves. And then all of a sudden they, they start realizing that, yes, I can do these things. I just need a little help to get started on it. It's not just the fly tying and fishing that make Colburn's class such a valuable experience for his students. Colburn is a military veteran as well. 60 years ago, yeah. basic training. Wow. You're a pretty handsome dog That's right. before you got weathered. Well, <laughs> hey, I, I, you take the best yeah, car in the world and run it for a few thousand miles, it doesn't look too awful sharp. <laughs> Well, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, it was during the Depression, and that was not a good time. But uh, it was a good life. I'm not sorry that I put in 20 years, uh, but uh, it was better than milking cows and pitching hay. <laughs> Fly fishing and fly tying have also helped previous generations of injured soldiers. A uh, guy named Bill Blades, he gave me a couple of my first fly tying lessons back in the 1950s. He taught fly tying at Great Lakes Naval Hospital to the wounded sailors primarily in uh, World War II. Colburn has worked with about 30 wounded men and women since he began his fly tying program about a year and a half ago. He says he will continue to teach fly tying and fishing as long as needed. On today's fishing expedition to the pond, Colburn has also invited along retired Marine Corporal Bill Johnston, who served in Vietnam from 1968 to 1971. Eva Cochran is also fishing. She was a sergeant in the Army and was injured in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Once out there, John guides them through the casting process like an elder statesman of fly fishing. Well, they call this fishing and not catching. Avon is the only one who has luck with the bluegills on this day. But for the group, it's the time together that really seems to matter most. We love to listen to his stories. He tells some great stories. Uh, and he puts a lot of things in perspective for us. Uh, I mean, just today at lunch, we were talking about the stuff we don't like to eat. And he said, you can tell who didn't grow up during the Depression. And we thought, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's, so it kind of brings it home. It seems as though fishing and philosophy go together naturally. Maybe that's partly why John Colburn and his fly tying class are doing so much good. We have to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be joined by First Lieutenant Avind Forsett whose life forever changed when a roadside bomb exploded next to his vehicle in Mosul, Iraq. Also joining us will be retired Navy Captain Ed Nicholson of Port Tobacco, Maryland, the founder of Project Healing Waters. Do you know? What Asian plant was one of the first materials used and is still used today to make fly fishing rods? Do you know? What Asian plant was one of the first materials used and is still used today to make fly fishing rods? Answer, bamboo. Most fly fishing rods today are made with man-made composite materials, but purists still love their bamboo rods. Welcome back. Now with us is First Lieutenant Avin Forseth and Navy Captain Ed Nicholson. Thank you both for being here. Avin, you've undergone 22 surgeries to date. How are you keeping your spirits up? Uh, by fly fishing. <laughs> is that what time. really did it? I mean, were you feeling very aggressive and things like that before you got into into fly fishing? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. You were? I was. I mean, I, I, there was a period I went through a lot of uh, just mad frustration and de deep depression and just despair because I didn't think I was ever going to be able to do a lot of the activities I had done in the past again. And so fly fishing really saved me. 
When you came back after your injury and you were at Walter Reed, did you get much rehabilitation from the mental standpoint, being able to transition back into your community and into your life? Not a lot, no. I think because there are so many of us coming through there that unless, unless you're a real bad case, you kind of slip through the cracks. How, can, how do you think they can change that? They're actually working on it now. Um, they're, they're actually going through more formal uh, procedures to try to make sure that everybody gets screened and that everybody gets counseling. So they're actually coming up with new uh, standard operating procedures to try to make sure that everybody gets help. It's good to know. Captain Nicholson, Project Healing Waters, tell us about it. How did you start it? Well, uh, about two years ago, uh, after I retired the second time, I spent 30 years in the Navy and then worked for private industry for 10 years there in the local area in Maryland where I live. And I decided that was it. Enough's enough. And uh, I had some time on my hand. I love the outdoors. Uh, I knew I was going to be outdoors myself. So I said, well, maybe I'll go down to Walter Reed and see if any of the guys down there want to go fishing or go hunting, mm. primarily fly fishing. And from that kind of simple-minded approach as to what I wanted to do and how I wanted to help, uh, the project gets started. I met John Colburn, met some of the other folks, got some more volunteers, got in the right doors, and the next thing you know, we have a program going. What was it about fly fishing in particular? I know you were passionate about it, but how did you think that would help in the rehabilitation process? Well, uh, fly fishing is a technical uh, art, so to speak. Uh, it requires uh, some finesse. It requires the use of a lot of muscles and, 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 uh, and your arms, and you need to wade. Uh, there are a lot of things that are going on that could help somebody who's trying to rehabilitate and get back uh, those, uh, those motor skills that perhaps they lost. You know, when I was reading about this segment, Avon, I was thinking to myself, how can you do it? Were you scared the first time? Were you intimidated? You were previously a fly fisherman, correct? Yes, ma'am. Were you intimidated by the process of having to figure out how to make it all work this time around? Very much so. In fact, that almost kept me from going out with Ed the first time um, because I really was afraid that I was going to make a fool of myself, and I really didn't know after doing it so long, being able-bodied, how I was going to adapt. Um, so then it was really my mom that talked me into it, and then it was also the chief of OT that said, Lieutenant, you will go fishing with Captain Nicholson. <laughs> so at I that said, point you're following two yeah, orders, right. right? Yeah, so I said, Roger that, sir, let's go. So. Was there a moment when it all sort of came together and began to click for you? There was. the first, Our first outing, my first outing with Healing Waters, we went to uh, Beaver Creek, and the minute I hit the water, I kind of started to play with it a little bit, and, and the first time I caught a fish, I thought, okay, I can do this, I can adapt, you know, this will work. Captain Nicholson, I can I feel so much camaraderie here, and that there's almost a mentor-mentee kind of relationship, and we saw it with Mr. Colburn as well. What do you think the is you know the intergenerational effect of all of this? How is that so helpful? Well, we have a special bond because uh, I spent a career in the Navy. He's an Army guy. Uh, so you really don't like each other? We, is that what well, you're trying to say? No, we, can <laughs> bridge, we can bridge that gap pretty easily. For this, but, we'll bridge it, right? <laughs> but, but underneath it all, we have a common bond. We're, we're military guys. Uh, I'm retired, but like an old Navy captain told me one time, you never really take off your uniform. So when I saw these guys, I, I was down in Walter Reed a couple of years ago with my own little problem. And so when I was recuperating and walking up and down the, the halls or passageways, uh, I'd see the guys, you know, all banged up, uh, amputees, really, really uh, suff having suffered some uh, very terrific injuries. So I said, you know, as I said before, got time on my hands, let's get started. So that's, that's really where we're coming from, intergenerational. Uh, it, there's no real gap. I mean, I think Avon would say we carry on just like a couple of guys, and it doesn't make any difference that I'm probably oh, 30 years older than him, probably, but... I'm yeah. not sure I'd want to sit down with the two of you for the Army-Navy game, yeah, yeah, but well, uh, Avon, John Colburn, what kind of words of wisdom has he given you over your time? Uh, he's, uh, he's a funny guy. He's, I think the one he's given me is... Um, Never marry a woman that has more problems than you. <laughs> never marry a woman whose bus size is larger than her IQ. <laughs> and never marry your best friend. That's the things I really remember from John. Well, I'm glad I asked 
that question. <laughs> Next up, quite a lot for me. And this is all about fly fishing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, he, he gets a lot of good advice. He doesn't take most of it, but uh, you know, we, we work on him. We've made him. We've made him a better fly fisherman. We can say that that's for sure. That's good to know. Yeah. It, that's good no. to know. But John's I, a good mentor. He, he's he a tells good me mentor. that stuff. But yeah, I mean, he's taught me a lot about fly tying and fly fishing, and and he's always been good for me emotionally because he's always you know he comes see me. These guys will come see me when I'm in the hospital, and that's the other thing that keeps my spirits up is just when they they've always been there for me, always. Captain Nicholson, what do you get out of it as a mentor? Well. <laughs> It's very satisfying, of course, when you help somebody in, in this particular situation. And I get a lot out of it because I'm helping them in a, in a field, so to speak, that I very much enjoy myself. And it's not just for the moment. Uh, sure, these guys come in there. They can spend anywhere from three months to two years at Walter Reed. But then they go home. I'd like to see them be able to go home uh, having acquired a new skill or, in Avon's case, uh, he's reacquired the desire to go back into fly fishing, where in the first time I met him, he, he was not going to fly fish again. He just he didn't think he could do it. He didn't want to do it. And I think he's come a long way since then. So that's, that's my satisfaction. Avon, I know a lot of people, when they come back from the war, especially when they're hurt, there's a sense of aggression. And you just don't have that mental um, togetherness that you might have had before to handle everyday life. How does this help you in terms of mental health? It helps you focus is the main thing because uh, fly fishing is a, is a sport where if you're not out there on the water concentrating, you're just not going to be successful. You know, you got to think about uh, your fundamentals. you got to think about your style. You really have to pay attention to what you're doing. And it helps you focus on that. Um, and it's very peaceful. Does very it peaceful. stop your mind from talking to you and just you know going through all the memories and everything that's gone on? It does. In fact, a, a good buddy of mine, Lieutenant Soynos, who was uh, injured in Iraq, he says he told me this summer when we were out in Montana that when he's out on the water, um, focusing on his fundamentals, it's the only time that it, it's the only time that he's not in pain. It's when the, the, when the pain just doesn't is not overtaken. Isn't that interesting? So it's mm -hmm. mind over matter a little bit for him. Talking about that, the doctors at Walter Reed, do they endorse what you're doing? Very much so. Uh, the first person that I met that really got things rolling was a colonel by the name of Bill Howard, who was head of the OT clinic, op occupational therapy clinic, and he was very much taken with what we were offering. And it's not just me. It was a lot of volunteers from Trout Unlimited and the Federation of Fly Fishers, people like John, that got involved. But he was very much taken with what we were doing because he saw it perhaps more clearly than I did that it was part of therapy. In other words, we don't, we don't go down there now and say this is an event, let's go fishing. I mean, that, that's fun and people enjoy that, but it really doesn't key on the therapy part of it, the, right. the need to be able to do things with your hands and your arms. If you're missing a leg, you gotta be able to wade in the water and not fall down. And, that helps him and helped him and, and the current uh, uh, chief of the therapy there. Uh, Progress in, yeah, their, in their therapeutic. Yeah. And they, they, they support it because of that, not because it's just an event, a fun event. So I, I'm not a fly fisher woman, although I want to try now because it looked to. awesome. I'd yeah. love to go with you guys sometime. I understand you have a story, and I hope I get this right, about somebody, a woolly bugger? A woolly bugger? <laughs> well, you, you, so, you've never met a woolly The guy bugger. who tied it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know which story. And he had story. one arm, I think. Oh, oh, you're talking about, who is that, Sean? Sean Locker, Sergeant yeah, Locker. Just yeah, Sean, he, he became uh, notorious for his woolly boogers, and John, I think, was referring to him on the previous piece. Lost an arm, had an eye gone. And uh, he was tying some very creative woolly burger, boogers. These are flies that look kind of like a woolly bug. And you tie them in all sorts of configurations and all sorts of artistic uh, uh, flair, and they catch fish. And he was able to do it with oh, one yeah. arm. Oh, yeah. And, and he was, uh, people were coming up at some of the fly fishing shows saying, hey, I'll take two of those. And he's 
there they go. The key to that is when he first learned how to do it, whenever John teaches us a fly, he makes us do 12 so that we go proficient that fly. Wow. Well, this is, uh, Sean learned it before he had his arm, and so he was so determined to tie his 12 woolly buggers that he went home with one arm and his teeth, and that's how he tied him with his teeth and one arm, and he came, he came the next class with all 12 of his woolly buggers. He was just that determined. Wow. I want to thank both of you for being here today. I want to thank you so much for serving our country. We appreciate all that you've done. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.